Open Data, Lost Opportunity or Unrealized Potential. A paper by Serdar Tamas, Marcus Holgerson, Joachim Bjorkdahl, and Martin Valin, published in Technovation. Open data is currently gaining momentum in both policy and business communities. In this work, we put forward a simple yet powerful argument. There is great potential in open data, but current motives and beliefs about open data do not necessarily lead to the investments needed to realize this potential. Instead, open data risks becoming a lost opportunity. The potential of open data relies on the core characteristics of data. It is cumulative and combinatorial, and the value derived from it is often exponentially related to the size of the data set. By pooling open data, organizations can create value at a level no single organization could accomplish alone. Sharing data openly can spark solutions to societal challenges that at first glance are unrelated to the data. Consider, for example, the large negative environmental impact of online shopping of clothes and fashion. For some types of goods, as much as 80% of orders are returned, often because consumers struggle to select the right size when shopping online. While many online retailers deal with the problem by pruning supply chain inefficiencies, a Norwegian startup attacked the problem's root causes by leveraging open data and artificial intelligence. The company used purchase history across individuals, resellers, and brands to create digital twins for consumers' body parts. The technology significantly improves the likelihood of ordering the right size when customers shop for well-fitting clothes. While there are clear business cases like these for open data, we also see many failed attempts. In fact, many organizations create open data initiatives without a clear idea about how it will benefit the rest of the business. In our empirical analysis of survey results, we identified five factors that explain most of the variation in the data set on open data motives. These factors include ease and need of use, business potential, capabilities and openness for open data, legitimacy, business and legal risks. We also assessed how these factors are linked to investments in open data. We found that only ease and need of use, capabilities, and openness for open data, and legitimacy could positively and significantly predict investments in open data. Surprisingly, business potential and business and legal risks have no significant effects. In other words, business benefits and risks do not seem to be primary considerations when engaging in open data. In our interviews, we observed some frustration. For example, one project manager told us that the organization engaged in open data to be able to brag about being open. Another one told us that eventually we need to have returns, we need to have some sort of leverage to justify that opening data is good. Another project manager said that we are publishing data that no one is using. Should we really do that? At this point, we might ask ourselves, does it really matter why organizations engage in open data as long as they do it? Our answer is a sounding yes. The data must not only be open, but also useful, usable, cleaned, and technically and legally accessible, and it must be matched by investments in information, metadata, software, quality management, and social tools that can cultivate the ecosystem around the open data, in addition to data analytics capabilities. Down the road, for open data to create value, someone will need to be able to use it, and for this to happen, complementary investments and capabilities are often needed. Such investments are not likely to be made without a clear idea about how they will contribute to success. Our research provides several recommendations for organizations to better realize the potential of open data. First, decision makers must identify and decide what investments in complementary assets they need to make in order to realize the potential from outbound open data. For example, Open data must be matched with technology. This was the case in the investigation of the Panama Papers scandal. The big breakthrough did not come until the Panama Papers were complemented with new graph database technology. This underscores an important insight for practice. Making data openly available does not necessarily create a lot of value if not matched with complementary technologies, systems, and tools for users. For example, Microsoft made investments in tools, framework, and templates to enable data sharing in their open data initiative. And the European Patent Office 
invested in expert support and online communities to enable better use of the data in their patent database project. Second, our results highlight the need for decision makers to align incentives and policies, both within and between organizations. If open data is truly to create value beyond signaling and legitimacy. This is sometimes more challenging than accessing the right technology, as one interviewee told us. Technology can be fixed. The real challenges are much more like culture and trust and legal issues. Third, decision makers must consider what type of open data business model to use. For public organizations, the open data business model is mainly focused on value creation, often prompted by a legal mandate for open data. For private firms, the situation is often more complex as their open data business models need not only to create value, but also to capture a portion of that value to establish competitive advantage. Simply releasing data into the open without a plan for how to create and capture value is likely to produce meager results. To learn more, read our full paper published in Technovation.